This car alternator might seem like a regular one, but in our previous project we have converted it into a powerful brushless motor. Well, the link to that is at the top right corner. Now, if you look closely, there we have got a permanent magnet router right inside of this car alternator, which makes this car alternator useful for our today's project video, as we are going to use this converted car alternator to power our bicycle and convert it into an electric one. So with that being said, it's time to get us started. Here I would love to thank JLCPCB for making this learning curve possible for all of us. JLCPCB is one of the largest PCB manufacturer around the globe, providing their finest quality services right at our doorstep. We have partnered with JLCPCB for the last three years and there have not been a single glitch in their services, whether it's customized printed circuit boards for our project or their assembly. So don't forget to visit jlcpcb.com to get great deals on your order. The link is in the description below. Now you guys have previously seen us converting this bicycle two times and in the previous two conversion we have used this regular chain as pocket that comes with the bicycle. But for this conversion what we are going to do is to use this set of gears that uh, we have got from our local market as it's used in our local 125 cc bike but before we do that we have to undo those reverts right on top of this big gear so time to do that So finally we are able to get this gear out of its original contraption. We don't need these parts anymore. But what we are going to need is this pair of gears that are going to transmit power from the alternator right into our bicycle wheel. But uh, if you notice over here, these two gears have different sizes which responds to the gear ratio that we are going to achieve using these gears as the one right over here is the pinion having 18 teeth while this one has 72 teeth which means that we are going to have four times the torque and we are going to reduce four times the rpm from this alternator so since this alternator offers a lot of rpm that we have to reduce so we are going to mount the pinion right on to the shaft of this alternator and uh, this large gear is going to be mounted right over here but guess what our luck is going too good as uh, this gear has the same size as what we have right onto the adopter of this wheel. Now to mount this big gear on this wheel what we are going to do is to drill 6 holes so that it matches with the adopter right on top of the axle of this wheel. So Vaitava took the gear to the drill press and he started drilling. While I was editing the footage, I realized that the bit might be way too small for the hardened gear. But god damn it, I was absolutely wrong. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. This guy never do anything properly. And so do I. So we have just temporarily mounted the big gear on the wheel. And the problem that we are facing right now is that we have very limited space to mount our alternator right over here. And uh, what I'm suggesting Mujtaba is to cut down this piece, weld a new metal plate right over here and made that plate the mounting of our alternator. Mujtaba is really confused and he, as he thinks that we are going to screw our bicycle. And that's what the purpose of our DIY project videos these days is.
So after a bit of grinding, we have fitted everything together to see how the gear mesh is working. And the good thing is that it's working perfectly, but you see the problem right over here is that we have supported everything on this plate. The motor mounting is bending and uh, I doubt that this gear will go off if we are going to just rely on this plate. So what we are going to do is to weld a plate right over here and here so to strengthen this whole mounting. So finally we have got the motor in its place and as you can see over here it's much better with these supports than it was before. So with that being said we are done with the drive mechanism but to drive this motor we are going to need a brushless speed controller and luckily we have got one over here and as you can see this thing is rated for 200 amps and it can handle 12 cells lithium ion battery pack. So if you do the math, this thing can put up 10 kilowatts of power into the bicycle. Well, the setup next to us is a 5 kilowatt power wall project that we are going to show you in our next project video. So stay tuned for that. Now this power wall can power everything in our house and our workshop combining our compressors, our heat gun and the stuff like that. So just imagine what this 10 kilowatts of power can do in a bicycle. Well, we are going to have lots of fun with this much amount of power. So stick towards the end of the video as we are going to burst our bicycle into pieces. So let's get the rest of the stuff done. To power this bicycle, we custom built two of these battery packs. Each battery pack offers 12 packs in series with each pack having 4 cells in parallel. Now both these battery packs are going to be connected in parallel so that we are going to have a total capacity of nearly 1500 watts hour which is more than enough to power our bike. For more details about this battery pack, the link to the Instructables article is available in the description below. So be sure to check it out. Now the controller that we have got here is built for RC boards and needs water cooling. So to compensate for that, we have mounted it on an aluminium heat sink. So hopefully it's going to get the job done. So with the throttle assembly mounted, the next thing that we are going to need is a lithium ion cell that's going to provide the signal from the throttle to our speed controller since this speed controller does not offer an onboard battery elimination circuit. So that's why we are going to need an external source to power our servo tester and the stuff related to that. Another thing that we have got over here is our watt meter that's going to determine the amount of power this whole setup is drawing from this one and a half kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. So if I sum up the whole wiring, we have got the throttle that's going to provide voltage from 4 volt down to 0 volt to the servo tester that's going to provide the required pulse with modulation signal to our speed controller and that speed controller is going to drive our alternator using the power from our lithium ion battery pack. So with all this setup done, it's time to test this thing out. To analyze the results, we are going to use a watt meter and a GPS speedometer on our smartphone. Now keep that in mind that our smartphone's GPS speedometer was showing 7 km per hour less speed 
compared to the speedometer of our car. So obviously in this case we are going to believe the more expensive version of the speedometer. Now in our previous project we have tested this converted car alternator using a 24 inch prop and it was just drawing a thousand watts. So in this case I was expecting that there must be torque issues as we just geared this alternator four times but to my surprise there was no such issues and this whole setup has plenty of power which you can see on Mushtaba's face and just listen to his first reviews of this bike. Now the bike offered insane amount of power and as I tried pulling this thing up to the maximum throttle the bike started wobbling like crazy. And believe me the next 3 seconds were the worst experience of this whole build. I would definitely have twice the number of bones on my way back home if I would have kept pulling the throttle anymore. Well, the maximum speed that we are able to take this bike to is around 70 km per hour compensating the speedometer error and still there is a lot more left on the throttle. To my guess it can easily touch 85 km per hour of top speed but better let it be a guess. Later we did a 2 km lap with aggressive throttle so that the average speed was around 40 km per hour. Now we ended up consuming 23 watt per kilometer which will give us a range of nearly 66 km on a single charge with this 1.5 kWh hour of battery pack. We did the same 2 km lap but this time with moderate throttle and averaging at 30 km per hour. So we ended up consuming 15 watt hour per km and that provided us with a range of freaking 100 km on a single charge. Well that's insane. Now guys it's our third time converting this bicycle as we barely started with a geared brush TC motor improved the efficiency with a whole board outrunner brushless motor and now this time we have converted it using a permanent magnet car alternator. This thing has insane amount of power and this whole converting experience has taught us a lot of things that we would love to share with you guys. So if you guys are willing so that we are going to do a video on all these conversions and their results, their pros and their cons. Let us know in the comment section down below and we'll definitely try to bring that video for you guys. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon next week.